Nancy Pelosi crushed Donald Trump today, crushed him. And he knows that she crushed him. And you can tell that Donald Trump wasn't sure what happened when he was first told what Nancy Pelosi did to him today. We have the video of that moment because it was NBC News Peter Alexander who told the president that Nancy Pelosi was changing her very polite suggestion that the president wait until after the government shutdown to find a mutual agreeable date for a State of the Union address. She was changing that to an absolute refusal to allow Donald Trump to set foot in the House chamber next week to give a State of the Union address after Donald Trump, in his typical bullying way, said that he was still going to show up and give his State of the Union address even after Nancy Pelosi had politely asked him not to. Now, watch Donald Trump's face as he listens to Peter Alexander's question. Now, it's very, very unlikely that Donald Trump has any idea what the phrase concurrent resolution means. You can kind of see that on his face, but he's probably on his way to figuring out that it sounds like Nancy Pelosi has more power over this whole State of the Union thing than Donald Trump realized. Mr. President, Nancy Pelosi just responded and she said she will not consider a concurrent resolution to have you come to the House on January 29th to deliver the State of the Union. Your response to the House Speaker. I'm not surprised. Uh, it's really a, a shame uh, what's happening with the Democrats. They've become radicalized. Uh, they don't want to see crime stop, which we can very easily do on the southern border. And it really is a shame uh, what's happening with the Democrats. A shame? That's the best Donald Trump could do? A shame? That was it. That was Donald Trump experiencing defeat on live television. And there wasn't much fight in that guy. In fact, there wasn't any fight in him. Speaker Pelosi had just killed Donald Trump's dream of being the very first president to deliver a State of the Union address during a government shutdown, and he didn't personalize his response to Nancy Pelosi. He didn't attack her. He didn't throw a nickname at her. An hour later, an hour later, the president had time to confer with his staff, and they could explain to him that a concurrent resolution is a resolution that has to pass both the House and the Senate and that a president's formal invitation to address a joint session of the House and Senate in a State of the Union address can only be made after a concurrent resolution inviting the president to do that is voted on by all members of the House and Senate. And that is what Nancy Pelosi said is not going to happen. The House of Representatives will not conduct the formal vote to officially invite Donald Trump into the House that is now controlled by Nancy Pelosi to address the Congress and the nation. And after his staff explained that to him, Donald Trump realized it's all over. Nancy Pelosi just said no, and that is the end of that. And so now, with that, let's listen to Donald Trump an hour later, after his staff had the time to explain to him just how badly Nancy Pelosi had beaten him at his tough guy game. Listen to just how defeated and crushed Donald Trump is, and the proof of how crushed he is is the nickname that he came up with deep in the rage of this defeat. The nickname he came up with for the person who defeated him, the person who crushed him today. We were planning on doing a really very important speech in front of the House and the Senate, the Supreme Court, and everybody else that's there. It's called the State of the Union. It's in the Constitution. We're supposed to be doing it, and now Nancy Pelosi, or Nancy, as I call her. She doesn't want to hear the truth. Nancy. That's the best he could do. Joe Reed's having a hard time controlling herself right now. <laughs> Nancy. Sorry. That was it. That was the best he could do. That's his new attack name for Nancy Pelosi. The same name that her family uses for her, the name her loving parents gave her. Imagine how crushed and dazed and confused Donald Trump had to be to come up with that when he reached for the hate-filled nickname. Nancy. That is as disoriented as you have ever seen Donald Trump publicly, seething with hatred, 
toward his latest opponent, as he so surely is. And he doesn't call her Lion Nancy. He doesn't call her Low Energy Nancy. The nickname he comes up with for the very first person who has stood up to him and stopped him, the first person who has had the power, the constitutionally granted power, to stop the president of the United States from getting what he wants, the first person to do that to Donald Trump, and the vicious nickname he comes up with for her is Nancy. That's what Donald Trump sounds like in total defeat. We just found out that she's canceled it, and I think that's a great blotch on the incredible country that we all love. It's a great, great, horrible mark. I don't believe it's ever happened before. Here's a horrible mark. Today, the Air Traffic Controllers Association, the Airline Pilots Association, and the Flight Attendants Association issued a warning to anyone boarding an aircraft during the government shutdown. We have a growing concern for the safety and security of our members, our airlines, the traveling public, due to the government shutdown. This is already the longest government shutdown in the history of the United States, and there is no end in sight. In our risk-averse industry, we cannot even calculate the level of risk currently at play, nor predict the point at which the entire system will break. It is unprecedented. Air traffic controllers, the people who prevent aircraft from crashing into each other in the sky, cannot predict the point at which the entire system will break. Donald Trump said he was proud to do this. He said he is proud to shut down the government, proud to be pushing air traffic controllers to the spot where they cannot predict when the entire system will break, and when that system breaks, people die. Here's another horrible mark of the Trump shutdown. I'm here today to bring my bill from Mr. Mitch McConnell to show him, if you're not familiar, I'm on a second chance program. I have to have my rent in on time. I have no more money coming in. I am a guard at the Smithsonian Institute. And I need to know when is he going to open things back up because I'm about to be evicted. If I don't have my rent in by the first of next month through the Second Chance program, I will be evicted. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on the button below for more from The Last Word and the rest of MSNBC.